Yo, what is up folks, TrevTCG here, and today we take a look at Ezra Prowess, Outlaws is finding out, we have a bunch of new exciting cards, and the two of those that I want to look at in particular for this video are Duelist of the Mind, the Nathan Sawyer Invitational card, uh, and Slickshot Show Off. So, Duelist of the Mind, 1 in a blue for an X3, Flying and Vigilance, power equals the number of cards you've drawn this card turn. Whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. The ability only triggers once each turn, we can trigger on ours and our opponents, but it's pretty nice. Uh, hey, draw some extra cards, cast some extra cards, beat down. Vigilance as well means it can block, whereas like Ledger Shredder, you kind of have to make the decision. Uh, and then also we have things we can do to draw a bunch of cards, like Treasure Cruise. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Snake Shot Show Off, then, uh, is one in a red for a 1-2 with Flying in Haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus 2 plus 0, which is quite a lot. But then it also has the Plot ability. So for a 1 in a red, you can kind of, like, plot it, and then you can then, from then on, cast it for free. That means immediately you get to start casting spells, or uh, to power it up, or protect it, um, which is pretty handy. And so, playing around these two in a Is It Prowess shell, we have some Balmors, Battle Mage Captains here, to power block creatures and trample when we're casting instants and sorceries. And then we have our kind of like red one drop package of Monastery Swift Spear and Soul Scar Mage. Surrounding those, then we have a bunch of really, really cheap spells to trigger all our things that want to make us draw cards or get bigger with Prowess. Um, and then the four treasure crews, which is simply A. Super also awesome enabler. One of the nice things with Duelist as well is that we can uh, loot cards into a graveyard to get treasure crews uh, online faster. And then obviously treasure crews makes Duelist huge. All, 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 all part of the workforce. Um, so, our one mana interaction and removal and stuff. Four copies of Player Fire and three copies of Shock. Um, that's a lot of shocks, an absolute ton of shocks. And one of the reasons for this is committing a crime, we want to target our opponent, anything they control, cards in their graveyard. Uh, and so the reason we're playing Shock over one of the other potential removal spells, like Fiery Impulse, is that you can target a player. So we always, well, can normally have a way to either, hey, hit a creature that's in play, um, lots of cheat removal makes us great versus Amalia, or if need be, we can shoot face, trigger the Committed Crime ability, and get the loot in. Nice. So seven effectively shock effects obviously some extra upside on play with fire uh there are then uh one copy of fading hope hey i was gonna play one of the red red new removal spell um but wanted to hey keep as many one mana spells as possible especially because we're kind of loading up a little bit on two drop creatures so one fading hope is a bit of a catch-all and in a pinch also protects our own creatures but return a creature hey, and if it's value value three or less scry one um so spell pieces for protection uh you see a guard approach Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, so blue, and as the hide, which is the thing we're playing it for here, so primarily, target creature you control gains tax proof at a turn. Um, pretty nice. There are a bunch of different effects like this in the format. The reason I'm opting not to play slip through space, which is the one that phases the creature out, is that we want to be attacking, we're generally going to be attacking when our opponent's casting removal, and so we want to actually connect with our attacks. Um, that in itself is fine. However... Uh... The ability to tap target creature, which is a way to trigger, of course, being a crime here, whereas all these other effects uh, of like you get hexproof and get plus opus three, there's a couple of different things that do that. All those effects just so only target your own creatures. And so I'm using you see a guard approach here because it can also target our opponent stuff to enable, uh, well, to commit crimes <laughs> for duelists of the mind. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, and then a few more things, two Monstrous Rage, which is a huge power boost and a trample, uh, especially helping our Monstrous Spears and our Soul Scar Mages, and then four Ancestral Angras. Um, I'm not playing any like straight up cantrips like Consider in this deck, um, but I wanted to have some ways to keep drawing cards, obviously the extra draws help with Duels of the Mind, power that up, uh, and trample is good on our smaller creatures as well. So, uh, and there's a Gigantha here because we can play Gigantha. I'm going to take this into some best of one arena rate uh, and see how it does. Uh, we like Creature Light, we only have a Soul Scar Mage, but we don't have a play. I feel fine keeping this, but obviously, if we don't draw another threat, we might run into some problems. Let's just go ahead and run this out. So I guess where Gigantic sells the most. Ganjo. Okay. Uh, given we drew the Duelist, let's. Just hop in for one and drop into play. Really, really interested to see how this card plays. 
Uh, no threat here. Like, looks to be, like, a Django could have been a few different things. This looks to be we white control. Um, as far as cheap removal, I think the way we play this is to... Uh, not sure. I'm going to play this on red. Try and anger the uh, Soul Skull Major. See how Prone feels about it. Okay. Um, and then given this as well, I think what I want to do... We've got two copies of the VCA Guard approach. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play with Flyer Face here. That'll trigger the Commit a Crime on Duelist. See if what they actually want to do. They're going to veto that, but that is absolutely fine. We still get to resolve our trigger with Duelist here. We'll absolutely take action. We'll draw, we'll discard the bonus Shiv and Reef. And yeah, take seven. Now, we'll end with this up. Just being vigilant and like dodging like a... Uh, oh. That's not very nice. Yeah. There. There. Alright. Well everything was looking kind of nice. We'll grab Gigantha here and pass. Awkward. Um... The problem we go like Swift Spirit Attack. If they think they have his Wandering Emperor, Swift Spirit Attack is actually pretty decent. We have the you see a guard to like either make us bigger than the token or hexproof versus the uh, minus. I think I slam Gigantha just because it applies more pressure. And obviously the, the Swift Spirit's gonna come out on haste later on. If they can't, it's like fair enough. The real concern is if we make the Spirit Spear and they do like nothing, and they just end the term memory to lose, we like instantly lose the game pretty much. Well, not instantly, but. Very likely. Okay. The spin. An attack. I can only imagine there's a Wandering Emperor coming. I pass. Uh. Because we're at the point where we have five mana now, I'm kind of holding shock in case we get to the... Um, so we draw into a uh, dual list. Maybe we should just take the damage where we can get it, but... I feel like we'll have the opportunity to use it like that at some point. Five. I'm gonna run this now. If they take all this, they're gonna seven. They have a piece of interaction here. We've got a spell pierce, but I'm like, hmm. We can spell pierce that. <laughs> I feel like your plan is to run out anyway, unless you're worried about actually dying, then you just do it in combat, because you upload so much higher, but, nah. Uh, now they have a ton of mana. We have a monstrous rage. I mean, the cards on our hand add up to lethal. Doesn't mean very much. Um, so... I'm gonna let this resolve. We're gonna tap this. <laughs> we might as well take our damage. All right, there are one. <laughs> Which seems cool at all. It would be fun if we had lethal, but uh, yeah. This might be the end of the road. There are one that have a, a pilot cards. How 
what lucky we feeling. I mean, it doesn't matter if we're feeling lucky, right? That's a, like, yeah, sure. Surely they won't have anything. Uh, the other nice thing about not having, um, like, fire impulse, that kind of thing, like, is that we don't have to worry too much about exiling cards to cruise. Do I expect this to resolve? Absolutely not, but hey. Alright. Four cards. That pivotal time, if they can flash back the memory deluge, we might be uh, in a game over situation. But every creature is like kind of relevant. Also, like at this point in the game, with them at one, any time we draw a shop or anything like that, just gives us a bit of a like hey. Alright, if they, they do something silly and tap out, then. Ah, oh, new memory deluge. Okay, interesting, interesting. I'm moving this mic out of the way like it's actually connected. It's not the one over here that's actually doing anything. Yeah. Thunderfall is a go ahead. You drew a play with fire, I'm gonna pass here. See if they activate this thing. They don't, which is fair enough. Now that we have it, we can look to kind of create a window. It depends how aggressive they want to be with some of the spells. How much they actually want to win the game. Uh, you got two guys left here. A five. They're drawing one card off of this. Alright. Try this now. It is a good sign, but uh, yeah, they have no more lives. We can pay for that. Could BM and hold the scry. Nah, okay. Hey, we got there. Okay, that looks rough. On the play again, Swiss Beard, Duelist with Treasure Cruise, Anger to trigger the draw here, and a play with fire to get committing crimes as well. Absolutely, that was off. Uh, yeah, in the red zone. It's five left. Wish my duelist. Fine. See how quickly we can get crews online here. Gotta read it. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Shredder, we don't have a direct answer for. That's awkward. Um, I think about how much we care. So we can make second Swiss be and then we've got like attack into anger. I mean, and then if they don't block, they're taking a bunch of damage. We're gonna trigger Elijah Shredder. We're gonna run straight into the thing. They've just discarded things, good, you? Not good. Um, there are no good blocks. There are good blocks. Uh, I care about the next time. Well, no, this is gonna go. You'd have to pair the play with fire. This is both the most damage and then also the best way to get our treasure cruise online. I'll just guard some damage. And put this on the bottom. Okay, yeah. We're doing stuff. I mean, three cards in a grave is actually not that not that close to to getting treasure cruise online, but uh, hey. 
They've got three mana. The axe. Axe of Phoenix is pretty good. If they can bring Fe if they can find a land to bring Phoenixes back this turn, like hey, we're in trouble for sure. That is third Phoenix in the graveyard. C C Exodia. Oh. Okay. Need a few things to go right. Uh, okay, just leaving less toughness with the same power back is a little odd, but um, we'll see. So we're gonna end up having to trigger this again. They're obviously presenting lethal next turn, so you kind of need to try and find some kind of kill. Um, uh, Yeah, if we still had the, um... Is there any world where we can... No. Yeah, if we had the, uh, if we had the duelist in play, we get there, I think. But, uh, alas, it is no more. Did catch an axe. Uh, and this is still lethal on the way back, right? Maybe my best bet was like spell pacing that and hope they fail to block. Yeah, I don't know. We are, we are, we are dead on board. Alright, unfortunate, unfortunate. Again, seems to be like fairly, fairly decent. the play again. Double Shiver Reef might be a little painful, but um, we'll roll with the punches. Tiny Bones. Now this is exciting. Uh, do I attack into this? No, we're gonna kill it in a minute. I think I just play the Duelist and pass. And then we kill the Tiny Bones at the moment. And then get to draw cards off of it. Like that. Okay, Aetherborn is a is a nuisance. Oh, not block that. Um, we can tap the Aetherborn. Okay. He, yeah, let's try that. We use we use some more of the other mode. Uh, let's just. God, I mean, you know, steam vents. Uh, we drew spy with canal. It's only the first time. Um, at this point, maybe rather hold on to this before now. And kill tiny bones, but it's not doing anything like particularly powerful right this moment. If they cast, you see a guard approach. It's when it deals... Yeah, you have to cast it straight away. Unless I'm going to play a bit of a longer game here. If I can find a way to pair this up to kill the Gifted Aether, I'll be very happy. So I'll hold on it for now. Alright, what else we got? Nothing else. I'm going to use the guard approach here to get an extra prowess trigger on our opponent's turn. Or well, not prowess trigger, an extra duelist trigger here. This is a once per turn effect. Mm, maybe should have thought more about them just having a removal. Okay, a bit of triumph is annoying, but... Okay. Sure. Um, 
Oh, okay. Can we just play both our creatures out? Fine, so on 13. Again, they can keep attacking us with the Aether. Oh no. Well, that one's a bit of a problem. You can't really afford to take a bunch of damage off of Obliterator. Oh well, to, to sacrifice permanence to an Obliterator. They're on 15. Get tiny bones out of the way. When do we go face and try and race? We've got five cards. Basically, need to draw a treasure cruise to actually get through this. I think. And make a calculated decision and. Uh... Oh, that is interesting. Uh, shock. Shot goes face. Currently taking five, six, seven, eight. Gosh. No, no, we need to find a charge cruise. Let's not cycle all permanence. I'll do this now. Hmm. Saying that, this is the Soul Scar Mage. We actually put minus on minus one counters in the player here. Which would have been huge if I thought about it first. Jeez. Well, that is a bit of a. That was a bit done. That was taking some damage. I'm up for that. Do they have a way to kill Duelist? They fatal push here. They've got the Aether Born. He has played with fire, but not any of the other. No blocks. They're going to eight. They're going to seven. Oh, yeah, they can cast creatures as well. Two, three, four. Damn, life's the problem. Yeah, I should have thought about the Soul Scar Mage. You could have just shrunk the Obliterator down. Um. I should cast this thing. They go down to four, down to three. Okay. Would have loved the treasure cruise there. Oh, I love getting good games. They've got Gary. They've got great. They've got Gary, right? Assume, assumedly. Make some blocks. Out of five. Okay. Yeah, we get a duelist. That type. There. Yeah, I just need to draw treasure cruise there. That's fair enough. Oh, this is the first time I've seen a show off. Which is interesting. Running kept seven. We have one threat here, but it's a good one. We've not played with this yet. We're on the draw. I'm going to kind of keep this. Again, a little bit threat like. Breeding pool. Interesting. What they're up to. My folk. Okay. I now have two of these. I'm gonna plot this. 
then we'll see what happens. All right. I was a little a little too worried maybe about the muffet with tons of abilities off. You gotta just cast this and play it out. But we've uh, we've plotted it now. Hex catch is interesting. They don't like a very aggressive start, but they, depending on what they draw here, could do some stuff. Kapala. Kapala's nice. Need more to cast stuff. Okay. Go ahead and cast this. Let's cast another one from our hand. Uh, I'd like to deploy Swiss Spear, but it's going to kind of get gunned off the ground here. We're going to... can't actually remove... Uh, it's any Merfolk. So, we'll just go ahead with like Monstrous Rage on one of these, I think. Do this. And he's a plus two plus O per non-creature spell, so you get quite a lot. That does nine. Uh, very... Easy to see a world where we can maybe kill them next turn. A merfolk, they've got company mana as well. Okay, Kameen is interesting, but a bit slow. Um, yeah. I'm going to combat. The thing is, we don't need any of the spells to actually resolve. Yep, that'll do it. Yeah, plus two plus super trickier is a lot. Um, on Mulligan, we have one lander. Oh, we're on the play as well. This is pretty tough. I think of this hand, we have to try and keep. You know, it's really rough. We have the Soul Scar Mage. We have like something going to five. I think would be. Pretty dribble. The shock on the bottom. Let's try and write a soul's gone mage to injury. Let me um I'm still watching at this point. I'm gonna try and move my camera up here and see if that's any better. I know the gameplay is, but for a combination of gameplay and you know sometimes it's not the greatest. I'm gonna play the fire now, I'll try and look for a land. And maybe I've done this on upkeep, to be honest. Leave that on top. Yeah. Mode to self. Got some stops. Think about it. Bishop is not a great look for us. Um, but we'll persevere. I maybe should have played this on a, on red, but we did take advantage. But we do take the connect. Like, yeah, Monster's Rage just kill it, to be fair. Which is a, just a, a thing we... An, an offer I think we do take, actually. Okay. Like, hey. Alright, I'll shot for his demons. Let's go ahead and attack here. No blocks. Let's shrink the Valkyrie. Where do we go face? I think we shrink the Valkyrie. So I'm going to close the game. The difference in terms of like pure damage output. Okay, that's great. Uh... As this now is more damage. See the way we get a loot. We are going to only have the uh in hand anyway. Fine. They got a 1-1. One, one. Actually, it's annoying. But hey. I got four cards in a graveyard. You haven't played too much timeless. The, uh, do you not enable these? Like, like, we enable them like fairly quickly, but like not, not, not super quickly. Uh, I'll go ahead and block this. Alright. Okay, drawing the bonus cruise is not necessarily what we wanted. Actually, one land off being able to do. 
Oh, dear. Angels. I mean, sacrifice the damage, just like, oh yeah, we could potentially, like, maybe should have just, like, cast a second shock on the Valkyrie and their upkeep. Then gone on the loot. We'd be... I guess we'd have cast the treasure cruise, we just paid three mana for it. The bluff attack of the Valkyrie. I'm not gonna add this because we're nowhere near. We're, ne we're never gonna cast it. Alright, yeah, they're on like. effectively infinite life. They say go. This is such a feels bad. We're going to 12. We'll go ahead and cruise away. Alright, maybe we can untap. Do I offer this up? I guess what's blocking it is a Valkyrie. These things are about to be infinitely large. We probably just take four, right? Yeah. They they should not have block. This is this is almost unwinnable at this point, but we'll we'll try and see what we can do. We can maybe blow some which that. A little bit of oops. Uh, no, these are 12. Sorry. Or we, we might as well be then. Uh, okay. Angel's not the greatest matchup for us. Went two and three there. Two and three. Um, main observation, I guess, is that, like, hey, we drew you slick shot in one game, and it kills your opponent very, very quickly. Um, this gets a ton of power. Um, just for casting some spells, and the ability to like play it seems decent. Sometimes you just want to play it on two to swing with it. But having the option is nice. Duelist is interesting. I think Duelist wants to play in a bit of a slower shell. Doesn't necessarily play that well with prowess stuff. Um, it wants to like try and trigger on both players. Tons. Whereas in like a normal, a normal power shell, you just want to cast all your spells and attack. Um, or like maybe have some protection. You don't really want to be, if you've got to remove you generally want to play it on your turn. So, show off, amazing, in this kind of deck. Duelist maybe so something a little bit more um, controlling or trying to kind of play more of a middle game. It does seem really interesting in something like Phoenix, um, but I don't think it's going to overtake Ledger Shredder anytime soon. But, actually, actually I shouldn't do that. Most of the spells you're casting in Phoenix are like cantrips, and so this doesn't really care about them. But hey, uh, you see a guard approach. This really impressed me. Um, the ability to tap your opponent's creatures down, uh, as well as being able to give yourself hex proof, that like extra kind of like ability on that is actually pretty nice. And the kill a couple of times, the wind versus blue white control, where we were able to tap down their mana land was actually pretty sweet. Um, and that being able to kind of trigger duelists um, with the tap ability to commit crimes seems like a nice one to know about. Um, but hey. I think the shell's pretty solid, but I would probably cut the duelist for something else. Plays more into the kind of like just just kill your opponent plan. Um, you can even go and additionally, the times we drew treasure cruise, we uh, there are a couple of games we drew multiple. There are a couple of games where we would have drawn it and it would have won this game if we drawn it. But hey, uh, hard to say. Probably something like if you want to play blue red prowess, because obviously you can play slick shot in a mono red prowess deck. Um, you can even go more towards like Red Blitz uh, with Runaway Steamkin. Um, but hey, there's some options there. I think overall there's some cool stuff here. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do like, subscribe, share it around. Uh, and yeah, these matches are streamed live over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash trevtcg. Um, so if you want to, you can also follow me there um, and catch me live if you want to ask questions and stuff like that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Peace out. Have a great day.